test project is a powerful test automation tool, and if you followed along with the other videos in the series, you should have a pretty good grasp of how to use it. However, just watching videos won't get you to actually learn the nuances of how a tool works. The best way to learn anything is by doing. It's great to watch a few videos and understand the basics of how a tool works, but if you want to really get the most out of it, you need to sit down and use the tool. Thankfully, Test Project is very easy to get started with, and so hopefully you already have it set up and ready to use. Let's take a look at pulling all the different pieces together and doing a test automation challenge with Test Project. In this video, we'll set up the challenge at a high level so that you have the opportunity to try and solve it using Test Project and the tools that it provides. In the next couple of videos in this series, I'll show you how you could go about solving this challenge, but the desire really is that you gain comfort and experience with this tool, and you'll get much more of that if you try to figure out how to do it on your own before watching how we did it. So here's the challenge. Using Wikipedia, try to create a test that compares what you get in the UI with the responses that you get in the API. Now to help you get started with this, let's take a look at two tests. The first one will get API responses, and the second one will get the text from the page through the UI. So let's start with the API test. We have a blank test open here, so the first thing we need to do is to add a test step, and then we'll change the type here to action, and then let's select an action, so let's search for rest. And we can see here we get the different rest requests that come up, and the, we want to use the HTTP GET request. And this icon here lets us know that this is an action that's coming from an add-on. If you haven't yet installed this add-on, you'll see a star icon here that you can click on to install the add-on without even leaving the recorder. So let's click on that. And that brings us up some input parameters that we want to consider. Now for the endpoint, we can use the endpoint in the Wikimedia API documentation here. So let's just copy this and bring it over here and we'll paste it in there. And then let's also put in a query here. So I've just pasted this in, but it's action tells us that we're doing a query and then the other parameters list. So we're searching uh, and we want the results to come back as a list. And then we're doing the actual search query that we're putting in. So in this case, we're searching for software testing and then we want the format to come back as JSON. Now, if you execute this query in a tool like Postman, you can see that it gives us back a nice list of the search results. So what we want to do is filter down the results that we get back from this query. So we want to get the query and the search results, and then we want to get the first result out of this. So we can do that in test project using the JSON path field here. So we'll start it with dollar to get us the root. So that gets us the entire uh, body of the response here. And then we want to filter down to, to what we're interested in. So we need to get the query, then we need to get the search, and we need the first item of the search, and then we're going to actually get this snippet out of that. So if we go back to test project, we can do that just using this syntax. So we'll say dollar $query to get us the query, and then the search. And then we want the first search term, so we'll do bracket zero bracket. And don't forget that in computer programming, zero is usually the first index. And then we'll do snippet here to get us the snippet out of that search response. So now what we want to do is save that result into the parameter. So under the response here, we can click on select parameter, and since the parameter that we want doesn't yet exist, we'll add a new parameter. So let's call this first search result. And we'll just add this. So we won't give it a value because this is an output parameter. And so when the response variable here gets populated by running the API query, it will populate the value from that. So we'll add this. And then we can click on create. And just like that, we have an API test. So now let's do a similar thing to create a UI test. So once again, I've started up a new test here and it has just the first step, the application URL navigation. And let's modify the URL here to have slash software underscore testing so that it will bring us to that page. We'll save it and then we'll run this step so that it brings us to that page. You can see that it's brought us to the software testing page. And so let's get this first paragraph here. So we'll double shift to freeze it. We'll go to actions and we'll select the get text action. And then from here, what we want to do is save this into an output parameter. So we'll go to select parameters again here. And let's create a new parameter that we will call paragraph text. 
And once again, we'll leave the value blank so that it will get populated when the test is run. We'll add that parameter and let's create that test step. So now the challenge that you have is to take these two tests that we have, this UI test and this API test, and combine them together and see if you can compare what the API gives you to what you get from the web page itself. Now there are subtle differences between the two, and so you'll probably need to use some of the actions from the string utilities add-on. So if you don't have that installed, you'll want to install it. If you get stuck, the next video in this series will walk you through a solution to this, but try it out on your own first. You'll end up learning a lot about test project. Have fun.